Hi guys, welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. I'm going to try recording this again. I keep messing up uh, what I'm doing. So we're going to look at today we've got, uh, I'm surrounded by torches. The reason is, as you can see, it's going dark. And in my previous video, when I was in the dark, the quality was horrendous. And so I'm just making sure there's a little bit of light because it looked pretty good when I was in the light. So we're going to go ahead and look at the logic gates of Minecraft's redstone uh, material in this uh, in this episode. Uh, I'm obviously not going to be covering every logic gate that is possible, and I'm not going to cover everything that's plausible. I'm just looking at the basic ones and the ones that you'll find yourself using the most if you're doing any work with redstone. So what we're going to look at first here is the material you'll need. You'll need redstone dust. You'll need redstone torches. A building material. I recommend dirt as always. It's the easiest to work with. A power source. I'm using switches in this case. Switches can be made by putting a stick on the bottom and a piece of cobblestone on the top in your crafting area here. You'll also need, uh, or at least you won't need, but you can have doors or anything else that can be affected by power, as well as something to tear your building material apart with. So the first gate we're going to be looking at is called the Knot Gate. I've referred to it as an inverter in my previous videos, and I did show you how to make one in my last video, which was the Redstone and Carts tutorial number two, which you can find linked in the description below. So we're going to uh, look at how to do this guy. Very simple. First thing I'm going to do is lay down a switch. Now this particular gate only uses one input, so I'm going to wire the switch forward. Now we're going to put down uh, a piece of building material. Next thing we're going to do is place down a piece of redstone torch. Now the trick here is that you have to put the redstone torch on the side. You can't put it on the top in this case. You need to put it either here, here, or here. For our purposes, I'm going to put it on the side so I can see it easily from the switch. What you're going to see is that uh, the input here has been uh, changed from off here, who feeds information to the torch on here. And it will always do the inverse of what the switch is doing. So when the switch is on, that turns off. If you understand how redstone works, and I've explained it briefly, what's happening is that this is feeding power in. When a redstone torch receives power from another source, it shuts off, and that shuts this redstone wire off. When I turn this off, this torch is no longer receiving power, and therefore sends power off. All right, so that's one of the most basic switches, or gates, sorry, that we're going to look at. The next one we're going to look at is the AND gate. This guy will take information from two input sources. So, how this works is you'll lay out your two input sources wherever you'd like, uh, as long as you can wire them into your system, and you'll need three blocks next to each other of your building material. You're going to need two redstone torches, one on each edge of the blocks, and one piece of redstone dust in the middle. You'll need a third redstone torch on the front of the system between the two torches on the middle block. What this does is ensures that, uh, sorry, actually you also need to wire your switches into the system so they actually do something. And then we're just going to wire some redstone dust around, oops, don't want it to touch the system. And I'm going to put down the torch again, around, just so that we can see it from where the switches are. And I don't have to walk around. Uh, what this does is it copies the out, or sorry, it copies the input in the output. So whatever the input is, the output will be as well. If certain conditions are met. This is a conditional switch and requires that both switches be set to on before the results of the output will change. That means that if either switch is off, or if both switches are off, there will be no output and therefore nothing will happen. So if I were to have a door, let's just say, attached to this, and were to flip one switch, nothing would happen. If I were to flip that again and flip another switch, nothing would happen. And if I were to flip both switches, it opens. And if both switches are off, it's closed. If one switch is off, it's closed. As you can see, it closes as soon as I shut off one switch. So I'm just going to go ahead and destroy this door. I'm actually going to do the smart thing this time. In the last video, you didn't see I dug the door out when I should have just done that, because it takes a half a second. The next one we're going to look at is the no, uh, the OR gate, which is actually, sorry, my antivirus has popped up again uh, here, so I'm just going to close that off. Sorry about that. And so the way the OR gate works is actually very simple, and technically the OR gate needs no excessive building. Uh, it's all wiring, technically. So what we can do is simply go like this and attach this. And as you can see, because one switch is on, the output immediately became on. 
This is the OR gate. What happens is if either switch has the on out or on input, the output is on. What you can do, uh, and sometimes this is necessary, and I'll give you an example of why, is you can build this out like this and then add to the switch a three-piece layer like this, put a redstone torch on the back one's top, put a piece of redstone wire in the middle one top, and put a redstone torch on the front of the last one as well as a piece of redstone wiring on the top. And this mimics the input with the output. The reason this might be necessary is because let's say that your circuit looked for whatever reason like this. Each switch was really far away from each other and so you'd already used up a large portion of your buildable space with each of these. Now if you recall redstone wire has a maximum of 15 squares effective range. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you've used 12 squares on each of your wires and you can't go any further. 13, 14 one more square and it's no longer effective. So this is why this is helpful. We can now add in our three tier system, add in our torches on the positions they're required to be in and our redstone wiring. This now mimics the input on the output and so now the output is identical. What this means is that if I hit either switch way back here, you can see that up there, oh you can't even see that, there's no way you can see that the redstone wire has turned on. And if I come back here, flip the switch, or if I flip this switch, I think you get the deal. If both switches are on, perfect. So that's why you might want to use the ore with the construction, uh, with that little added piece. Usually you don't need to, and you can just use the wire only ore switch, which is actually really handy. Alrighty. Uh, I'll bug off antivirus just one moment, guys. My apologies. Okay, sorry, guys. And the last one we've, or not the last one, the last set we've got to look at are inverted of what we've looked at already. So we have the NOR and the NAND, which is N AND or N NOR, or N OR, sorry, so not OR and not AND. So obviously, how these are going to work is pretty simple. With the AND one, whoops, if you'll remember, with the AND originally, we built it like this. For the NAND, which will give the opposite output of the matching input, so if both of these are on, this will turn off instead of turning on as it does now. Simple way to do this is we remove the torch and add a piece of redstone wire. So now you can see that it's on when these are both off when only one is off, on, but when both are on, it turns off. The OR switch, uh, the NOR switch, my apologies, works in effectively the same manner. I hope I'm not going too fast for, the, uh, for you guys with this. I really don't want to rush through this and make you feel like I'm just brushing it off. So the NOR switch will work in effectively the same manner. Uh, you build your three-piece tier. This is necessary with the NOR switch. And then you simply add the redstone torch here. And then you, uh, whoops, not a building piece. I'm just going to go ahead and turn my switches off here. And then you add your redstone dust. And the same as before, instead of a torch here, we're going to build redstone dust. And then you can see the output is currently on. And if I flip either switch, the output turns off. Simple as that. The last thing we're going to, oh, frame rate issues. The last thing we're going to... Oh man, my frame rate is just locking up right now. I don't know why. It's killing my frame rate. There we go, it seems to have cleaned up. So the last thing we're going to look at here today is uh, the NSNOR latch, which I taught you guys yesterday. Uh, however, some people may not have watched that video. How this works is you're going to imagine a 3x3 three three grid, and this time I promise to destroy the right blocks. So you're going to imagine a 3x3 three three grid but we're going to remove everything except and I destroyed a block that I shouldn't have again uh, except for two corners so we're going to have one diagonal gap in the middle so you can build one skip build then what we're going to do is add two redstone torches they have to be on a side that's near the other block so that we can build the other one on the opposite face and have them facing like so 
Lastly, we're going to put some redstone wiring. We're going to wire this one, weirdly enough, into this one, and this one, oddly enough, into this one. So we created a circle. Now what's going to happen is there's three things that need to occur here. We need an output, and we need switches. So I'm going to put a switch wire back here, a switch wire back here. Our switches are attached to each block, so there should be one switch for each block. Our output attaches to either of these elbows that we'd like to choose, or alternatively, we can have two outputs so that this system affects two sets of objects in opposite intervals. So when one is on, one will be off, and when the other is on, uh, when one is turned off, the other turns back on. We're going to just run one output out of this elbow. So this output can affect anything we'd like, like, you know, for example, this door. Now what will happen is that this door will currently be open because we have the redstone wire running to it with power. And I'm actually going to... Um, oh god, sometimes I just hate the doors. They can be such a pain in the butt. Uh, there we go. So now the redstone wire is running in and that will be an open door. Uh, what we do is if I hit this switch, nothing will happen because this guy's already off. But, if we hit the switch behind the running torch... I heard the door make a noise, but it didn't move. Weird. Anyways, uh, it always requires that the opposite switch be hit. I can hit the switch as much as I'd like, nothing happens. The opposite switch needs to be hit to reset the system, and it can be hit as much as it likes. So each time that the system's going to change, the opposite switch needs to be, re needs to be hit. One way that this can be handy, uh, this particular system, is if you have a door, you can put one switch outside and one switch inside, and that means you can hit the switch inside to open, or sorry, outside to open the door, and once you get in through the door, ba -da -ba -ba -ba, you hit the other switch to close it. Uh, normally you can't wire two switches properly into a door all the time, it can work sometimes, doesn't work other times, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass. That's one way to do it, and what that also does uh, is if you have a button, uh, whereas you step on the plate instead of hitting a switch. What's really cool is you can step on the plate three miles away and the door will stay open until after you pass through and step on the indoor plate. That will hit the switch again and close the door for you. Alrighty. So the next uh, possible use we're going to look at is for the AND uh, switch. I don't really find that the OR switch is ever really useful for me. So we're going to look at the AND switch here, and how this can be useful is if you have a door and you want it only to be opened if you want somebody in. Alright, so what you do is we're going to set up our AND switch. I'm just going to set it up right here. And we're going to set up our output feed. And that output feed is going to go to this door. There we go. And then we're going to set up our torches on the top. And our redstone in the middle. And I'm going to set up our switches. So the first switch uh, is going to be inside the doorway. The second switch is going to be outside of the doorway. So this switch is going to loop around like this. Make sure it doesn't touch the side. That'll mess the system up. I think that's about long enough. So what will happen is I want this door to be closed. Oh, God, it's facing the wrong way again. I really really dislike that. Alright, so let's try this again. We've got a door here. There we go. And I want to get in this door, but the person inside hasn't unlocked it yet because they need to hit their switch and I need to hit my switch. If you recall, the end switch requires both inputs. I can't get in. So what I do is I ask the person to unlock the door from inside, and if they like me, they click their switch. What that means is that happy old me, I can click my switch, which will open the door, frame rate, walk in, and destroy everything that they've ever owned because they locked me out. So I mean, that's one of the cool uses that you can use for the AND switch. Um, there's tons of other uses you can have for each switch. I've only gone over the basics and the basic switches and gates, uh, whatever you want to call them. That's pretty much it for today's tutorial, and I think I'll be uh, setting up another tutorial hopefully to for tomorrow. So have a good day everybody, and have fun on Minecraft!